What's up guys, it's Sean from Window Tip Warriors and I'm here to make a quick video for you today on tinting flat glass windows. These are actually windows from a home and a customer actually dropped them off here before they install it on the house itself. Now this is a job that I have previously done but the windows have failed and the gaskets are leaking so they have to replace them. Now the customer is living in the home now so the customer decided to drop the windows off and have me tint them here so that they can just quickly install it and not have me have to lay out drop cloth and everything in the house. So these are the type of windows that have that crank at the bottom that they open um, like a door and they have the, uh, the hinge on the bottom. So these are very simple windows to do. There's no crazy gasket around the edge. The gasket that is around the edge is a very hard plastic. Um, so I'm gonna show you the prep, the cutting, and the installation all by myself and how you can do it by yourself as well. So the tools that we're gonna need for this, you can see I have my pouch on. The only tool in my pouch that I'm gonna use is the NT Pro A1, and I'm also going to use the gray Lidco card. Now the tools I have here on the bench, I have a razor. This is the, uh, this is a four inch, I mean five inch razor blade, I believe it is. And I'm gonna use this to clean the window before I put the window tint on there, just to make sure there's no debris, clear um, protective layer on them. I've peeled that off already. And actually that window over there, I've tinted already. So you can see the slight difference. The film that we installed on this is gonna be SunTech 70% Ultra Vision DS. Now the DS stands for designer series and the film is also, also uh, dry sensitive. It's not exactly pressure sensitive. Window tint for automotive window film is pressure sensitive. Once you squeegee that on, it's pretty much stuck on there. Uh, the dry sensitive film, uh, you could squeegee it out and still kind of nudge it over a little bit. It takes a, quite a lot of time to dry and this specific film doesn't leave glue behind so it doesn't exactly bond to the window when it's installed. But, all right, so we have the razor blade. We have a large Unger squeegee. This is gonna be for cleaning the water off before we install. And then I have the Blue Max in the Fusion handle. I have the, uh, I, I love the cropped Blue Max blade. So this is what I'm using with the Fusion. This is gonna be the final squeegee press to get as much water out from between the film and the glass as possible to increase the drying period or the drying time. And then of course I have the Blue Huck towel, just a standard window cleaning towel to clean it after I scrape it. Now you can also see on the door up here, I have an orange crush. Now it's whether you use a yellow turbo squeegee or you use the orange crush, they're pretty much the same style of squeegee. Uh, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna say the same style, but the same softness, the same hardness. Um, and I also have the hand D here, which has a built-in magnet on it, which is why it was hanging on the door. So I use this and just to mount the film in place when I'm cutting it, and you'll see that in just a second. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna prep the window to be tinted. And for that, we have to spray soapy water and razor blade it, so let's do that. So I'll spray a very light mist of water on the glass just to lubricate the razor blade. And you always wanna make sure you have a fresh blade in here. In here I do use stainless steel blades because architectural glass tends to be a little bit softer and you wanna be a lot more careful. So this blade right here has a slide out and this is the Triumph blades. And you can actually flip this blade over so it's double sided, it's not a single edge blade. So we do have a fresh blade in here. And what I like to do when I'm razor blading these large windows is I like to go around the edges first and then cover the middle. Now when you go along the edges, you can put the corner of the blade in there and just ride along. Now if there is anything on the glass, you will feel it. And if you feel something on the glass, if it feels like a sandy, gritty, gritty texture, um, it could be defects within the glass, but if you actually see something in that area where you hear the noise, just go back and forth a couple more times to remove that. If it is a defect in the glass, go over it and don't go over it too much because you'll dull the blade out and if you dull the blade out, you could scratch this glass. So we'll go around the edges and then we'll go in the center. Back and forth, overlapping strokes. So 
now this is a brand new window. So typically if this was a window inside of someone's home, I would razor blade it and then I would go over it with the towel. I'm gonna do that now, but I'm not gonna wipe the whole window down with the towel because it's a very clean window. I just wanna wipe the edges to make sure there's no grain or dirt. These came straight out of the box, so they're pretty much dust free. But I'm gonna go around the edge with the towel and then we'll go over the center with the squeegee. So now that we've wiped the edges, I'm gonna spray a very light mist on the window. And then I'll take the Unger blade with the black channel squeegee and just squeegee off the water that was on there from scraping it. And the reason to do this, cause if there was any hard contaminants and it gets on the film when we lay it out, even though we're not applying it right away, we wanna make sure there's no hard contaminants on there for when we squeegee it that it could transfer between the film and the glass when we install it. So now that the window is pretty much completely clean, we're not installing the film yet. We're gonna lay it out, cut it, then take it off, spray it, squeegee, then install it. Um, this is because if you take the film, say that we would take the, the glass right now, spray it with soapy water, and then pull the release off the film now and stick it on and then cut it. When you're cutting, anything that's in these side edges can go in between the film and the glass and completely ruin the job. So I like to pre-cut it, pull it off, squeegee it again, and then apply the film. This reduces contaminants by a lot. Not, I don't know an exact percentage, but it definitely decreases contamination based on experience. So let's go ahead and lay this film out, mount it in place and cut it, and take it from there. I spray a pretty generous amount of water. I'm not too worried about water running off because this is a cement floor. You'll see I have a piece of cardboard down here to protect the, uh, the edges of the glass, but I'm not worried about water. If we were doing this in someone's house, we'd have multiple drop cloths down. Be using, I'd be more conservative with the water. So right here we have a 36 inch roll. This is the UltraVision DS SunTech 70%. Now, if you look at this label here, you can see it says on the top corner, it says this film has liner on outside. That means that when you roll the film out, the way the roll is rolled out, this is the release liner. This is where the glue is, but it's also where the release liner is. Now, which side do we want to face the glass? You want the liner to face the glass because that's the side of, with the adhesive. And when you're gonna peel the, the liner off, when you cut it all out, you wanna make sure you're lined up exactly how you're gonna put it on when you're cutting it out. So let's lay the box down this way. Now we have the liner facing the window. We're just gonna grab this, get it as close to the glass, maybe two inches away, the box, and just lift up. Hang over the top edge about an inch or two and just let that cling to the glass. Now what we're gonna do is take the orange crush or yellow turbo, whichever you use. I'm just gonna mount it in place so it doesn't move while we're cutting. Now those two strokes will hold the film in place uh, very well. You know, there's no moving for that. So we won't have to worry about the film shifting while we're cutting the sides, creating inconsistent cuts. So now let's cut the bottom of this off so we can take the box out of the way. Again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you overhang the material. Take your Red Dot NT Pro A1 and cut away the film. All right, so now we have the film in place, all sides overhanging. Let's go ahead and cut these sides. Now this can become slightly difficult. First off, you wanna make sure you have a fresh stainless steel blade in your knife. Always stainless steel and always a new break, a new point on the edge so you don't scratch the glass or create a jagged cut. 
Now when it comes to corners, you want to take your hand and kind of like form into that corner. And then you're going to take the razor blade and just go from the top and go your way down at a perfect 45 degree angle. You don't want it to be completely parallel with the gasket or you can risk cutting the gasket. Now when I went to the bottom there, I cut it about two inches from the bottom. The reason I do that is because it gets a little coagulated and crinkled down there to the point you don't want to force the razor into there and cut, the, cut it a jagged cut. So we're going to leave that for now. We're going to focus on the top. We just cut from the top to the bottom. Now we're going to do from top to corner. Same method. 45 degree angle. Now a little tip here. When you rip the film off of the off, like when you make that cut and you rip the film off, you always want to hold the film in place and rip it away. So if you cut in here, you want to rip it away. If you rip it into the film, what are you going to do? You're going to rip the film. So you don't want to rip a perfectly piece of film. Always rip away. That's the simplest way you can do it. And now we're going to cut this top edge here all the way down to the bottom. Now pay attention because that can end up falling and pulling the whole entire film down and you don't want that. So don't cut it all the way to the top. Leave a little piece attached. That way when you do this, rip away. Didn't seem to cut, the razor didn't cut all the way through. And there you go. So now the last piece we have is the bottom. All right, so now let me give you a little visual here. This is a very tight gasket. There's no rubber. It's not a rubber gasket. It's very hard. Think of it like the frame of the window itself. So if we were to cut this exact to fit, yes, it will work, but we don't want it to be overhanging at all. So when I cut the bottom edge or whenever I cut the last edge, you always want the bottom to have a very, very, very faint gap on the bottom. Something that you won't even see with your eye, but you want it to be there. So when you cut, say that we have the window frame here, right? This is the ledge and this is the glass. When we cut, we don't want to be at a 45 degree angle. That would be a 45 degree because this is 90. So we don't want to cut at a 45 like we did on those sides. We want to cut it exactly horizontal with it, exactly horizontal with a very, very slight, maybe 10 degree, five degree angle. So when you cut that bottom, you want to cut straight. You don't want to cut on an angle or you'll get too close to that gasket and there'll be too much material and the water won't have anywhere to escape. So let's do that. Now when you get to the sides, you want to start from each corner on its own. You don't want to finish from corner to corner. You can go halfway. I usually go 90% and then I'll start again. So then the last thing we have to do is clean up these bottom sides. Since we cut down, we left about an inch and a half to two inches on the bottom here. So we'll just start from the bottom and cut up there. And then we're left with a nice clean cut there. Now when you do those final cuts, you want to match the same angle you were using when you were cutting down. That's why the, that way there's no inconsistencies in the continuous cut. All right, so now before we go and pull this off, we're going to clean up the corners a little bit. Most of the time you're going to have uh, some of the corners are not going to be perfect because you didn't round them out or anything. You just went from corner from the sides. So I'll show you up close what the corner is going to look like and what it should look like. All right, so now you guys can see very slightly that you see that corner is not exactly perfect. So the way we want to do this is just take it very lightly on the glass. Finish that edge. Now you don't want to press hard on the glass. Make sure you have a fresh break. 
and just kind of clean that edge up a little bit. And that's how it should look. All right, so it turns out that, that the two top corners were the only ones that were a little messy. So the bottom ones look perfectly fine. Now, the first thing we want to do is clean up all this wrinkleness, wrinkleness, uh, clean up all these bubbles. Spray some soapy water underneath, lay it down nice. And now what we're going to do is we're going to reverse roll this. Now, the proper way to reverse roll would be with the film facing the clear release liner side, facing us. So what we're going to have to do, it's going to be a little tricky, is uh, we're going to flip the film around and then roll it up from the bottom. So let's do that. You want to first make sure that the outside of the film is all nice and wet. That way when you flip it around, it will properly lay itself out on the glass. Now you can avoid this whole reverse roll method by having another person with you. If you were to just pull that film off the glass, have that person hold it, you stand on the other side, peel the release liner and spray it, and then do the future squeegeeing method that I'm gonna show you to clean the glass, and then that person can just go to the window and lay it on. But since we're doing this by ourselves, um, I'm showing you guys this method. So now it has flipped that piece of tint around, and now the clear release liner is facing us. This is still the top, that's still the bottom. These sides are reversed, which is fine. You're gonna see how this happens. Now I'm gonna take it from the bottom, but first I wanna spray this more with some soapy water. That way when we roll it up, it doesn't stick to itself. So we're gonna grab it from the bottom here. Be very careful when you're pulling the corners away because you can damage the corners if it's too dry underneath. That's why I always say use soapy water because the more soapy water you have, the less chances you have of creasing the material from handling it. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and get this corner started, this bottom started up. Just roll the edge up and wrap it up. This may take some practice to get this, the film to roll. It does become a little bit hard and difficult when you're just starting off, but just use patience and roll it up. Now, a little tip is you don't want to pull the film off the glass and roll it up. Roll it up with it still attached. It makes it easier to handle. That way, when it flies off, it doesn't end up creasing. And now you can pull it off. When you pull it off, lift it up above the, the pane. That way it doesn't crease. Now once you have this wrapped all the way up, you're gonna wanna straighten it out a bit. And then you can stick your finger inside and twirl it to tighten up the core of the roll. The tighter it is, the easier it becomes to install and the less of a mess you have. So now you have to hold, this. from the point of rolling it, don't let it slide down like that because it'll unspool. That's why you gotta make it nice and tight. Once you roll it up, you can't let it go. Whether you have someone hold it or you hold it yourself while you're doing the rest and you see when you hold it down, it'll unspool because of that soapy water. So you wanna hold it parallel. So now once we take the film off, right now you can see here on this side is the tint side. On this side is the clear release side. And I'll show you how we're gonna unroll this and reverse roll this onto the glass while removing the liner at the same time. But the first thing we have to do is squeegee the window and prepare it for application. So soapy water and a large Unger blade. I always like to wipe the blade off first to make sure there's no contaminants on it that would transfer to the window. So we'll start in the corner and just work our way down. Make sure you're not leaving any water residue behind because that water residue can contain contamination.
and I just like to do one more pass overlapping just to make sure. So now we have the window prepped. We're gonna soak it up with soapy water. Now this film is very easy to work with because it is not pressure sensitive. So unless you're working in direct sunlight and the sunlight or the sun rays, the heat from the sun evaporates the water very quickly. It's very easy to, uh, to work with because it doesn't stick very fast. So now we have the corner here, we have the outside and then the inside. So the release liner is on the outside. This is very easy to separate. I just use my teeth because I don't have a third hand, believe it or not. <laughs> All right guys, so in the process of making this video, I had probably five customers walk in and uh, this Sony A6500, after 30 minutes of consistent recording, stops. So you guys are gonna miss the complete application process of this. But right here I have a piece of automotive film and I'm gonna explain it as best as I can so you can understand what I did in order to get this piece of film on the glass. You can see the customer already picked the windows up. It was a little bit of an urgent thing and I'm not gonna be able to record another video like this again. So let me explain this part to you as best as possible and then continue on with the rest of the video that I was able to record. So we have the film reverse rolled here. You have, like I showed you before, the tint on this side and then on the inside, you have a clear release. What we're gonna do is separate that clear release, stick it to the roll here, and then hold it like this and the film will be exposed. So let's do that. So on the uh, automotive film, it's a little bit more tricky to get the release liner off. On the residential window film, which is the Ultra Vision DS, 70%, it's very easy to release a clear release liner. So you can see here, we have the release liner off. We're gonna fold it onto that, and I'm gonna hold the tint with my teeth and pull the rest of the release liner away very carefully with my teeth. Now you can see that the release liner here is now wrapped around on the roll side. I'm gonna make sure that's nice and tight. And then now when we go to put this on the window, this side will go onto the window. And then once that's mounted to the top, as you unroll, you see how the release liner is getting pulled off and getting wrapped around the edge. So that's a reverse roll. So you're unraveling it, and this will be attached to the top of the, like, top edge of the window as it's cut out, and you would just unravel it and let, allow it to lay onto the glass. And then when you get to the bottom here, you'll slightly grab the release liner as you're pulling it off. And then now all the tint will be stuck to the glass, and you'll be able to simply I'm not going to be able to do it here because the, the tint's not stuck to the glass. But once the tint's on the window like this, you'll be able to pull the release liner off and then squeegee the film out. Now, let's jump into where we left off where uh, I applied the film and I mounted it down with the large ungler handle. So I laid the film down on the window, misted it with water to lubricate it. I held it in place at the top and I just went down the center to mount it in place so it didn't move too much while using the Blue Max. Now let's get to the Blue Max. So now once you have the film all laid out and we mounted it in the center with the Unger handle, um, we're gonna go ahead and go over it with the Blue Max. So when I do this, I like to start at the top and from the center and more specifically across the top. And what we're doing here is removing as much water from between the film and the glass as possible, which helps with the drying process, especially when it's cold outside. Once this glass is done, it's being picked up and installed.
So as a final step, I like to take the blue huck towel and the gray lid coat card and push out around the edges just to make sure you get out as much water between the film and the glass around the edges as possible. And then finally wipe that bottom edge to get all the water that's coagulating in the bottom. And then we're gonna let this sit. I have the shop heater up here. It's been blowing hot air and then the customer is gonna come and pick these up. I hope that this video was helpful to you guys in the installation process. I believe the video got cut out um, when I was unrolling the material, but you got the majority of the process. While I was recording this, a bunch of people walked in and I had to talk to them about remote starts and window tinting and all this crazy stuff. So I hope you guys got the most information that you could from it. If you have any questions down below, comment, please subscribe, please like the video. Peace.